what we are going to t attempt to do where possible is to build on what already is happening. It's not to start anything from scratch. Are we together? Ne? So I would also request that people must be free. I will try and mix languages. A little bit. Africans, not so big. Ok, ne? So I'll try and mix, but the, the bulk of my, my, my input will be made in English. Tell us who you are, which organization you come from. I know you are a member of the local aid council, but which organ very briefly, and we'll move across. migrant and mine and transport workers. We are a mining community here to a large extent. We are also at risk because of that. And we've got areas where there is a, a national transport running and it cuts across. I don't know about uh, Northern Cape. Is it N1 that runs down to Cape Town? It comes from very far away and it will carry that virus. I'll come with it. Pat, Pat is from Joburg. And when Pet comes here, I must just have something for the night. Yeah. I want something for the night. I've got the virus, isn't it so? Where did I take it from? From Joburg. And maybe next week they will send me to Cape Town. When I get to Cape Town, I also want something nice for the night. I leave the virus there. One person can spread it like nobody's business. And uh, migrant workers, I'm sure we have a lot of migrant workers here because most of the people who work in mines are from outside countries, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, and so on and so on, you know? They come without their wives. And when they come here at night, they go out and search for what? <coughs> they search for sex workers. Our sisters, our young sisters, who have been produced by, as a result of being orphaned at a very, very early age. I wonder about this often thing, how it actually rotates back and comes back and hit back at us in, 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 in a very indirect way. Ne? Migrant, mine and transport workers, mm. they came in an area without their wives mm. and then they met sex workers. Mm. Now, I want to make an example. Here is me, Vivian. I met this transport worker and then he promised me don't have a wife, mm. he's single and he's in this area now. I'm going out with him and I believe everything that he tells me. Am I a, how do you call me? Am I a sex worker? No, you're not. A sex worker? Is someone selling her a, a body, body for money? Yeah. She's but not going a... out. She's not having a relationship. She's selling her body. You're not a sex worker, but what guarantee do you have? Because your man, in most of the time, he's out of your sight. He's away working. Hmm? And what else? And then, of course, men with more than one partner. And I hope here in the Northern Cape it's not practiced, you know. In most of other provinces like KZN, uh, it's, it's culture that I must have five women. I'm a Zulu. I'm a Zulu. I agree. Uh, like, for instance, me, I'm close to nine years with a virus now. And I don't use ARV. I'm using these herbs or the, if I feel sick, whatever, I can go to the doctor or to the clinic, whatever. But there is some misunderstanding whereby they don't trust my... So the challenge is that bringing together the Western uh, way of, of medicine and the traditional uh, medicine. So that even traditional healers, we, we, we don't leave them behind. You know, the majority of our people, the first point of entry when they get sick, they go to traditional healers. When we work uh, uh, in partnership with our traditional healers. Immediately after we do a strategy with a municipality, the next step we try and do is to have something called an opinion makers event, which is often a launch of a strategy because in this country we launch everything. Um, so a launch will be something where everyone is invited and there's food and there may be music and culture and um, the press will be there and so on.
And what we've tried to do is to take these launches and instead of just making them an event with five speeches, to make them more of an educational event for all the key opinion makers in an area. So in one area we would invite your traditional leaders, the chiefs, the traditional healers, uh, the women's organizations, all the school principals, um, anybody who is really important that people look up to. And they will come to this launch, but the launch will not just be a launch. We'll explain AIDS to people, we'll answer their questions, we'll talk about the strategy, and then we'll ask people to make pledges, to say, in my field of work, what am I going to do about this thing? How am I going to do something uh, to change the stigma, to change the discrimination, and to provide some of the care for people, or to prevent AIDS spreading? It's our political leadership, I think, who have not done enough um, to tackle the issue head on, to be clear, to communicate well on it, um, and to, to be serious role models and give a serious lead. I think now we're at a point where, where things are looking up. Um, we've been trying to build political will at local level for years now. Um, and in some areas it's been very successful. In under other areas, you know, one mayor leaves and the whole thing collapses. Um, you need your provincial and your national leadership to drive the process. Then the people at the other levels will follow and understand how important it is. Because what the problem is with HIV and AIDS is it's a problem that is so decentralized that in every family where someone is sick, there's an immediate impact on the poverty levels in that family, on the emotional well-being of that family, on the food security of that family, um, on whether the kids are going to school or not. And to address that, you have to really get into every house. You can't do it from a distance. Uh, a national AIDS plan is meaningless unless you have the foot soldiers to go and knock on every door um, and bring the services to those families. And the fact that AIDS is so stigmatized and so hidden makes it even more difficult. Because many people, you will only find out that someone is sick with AIDS when they're already almost dead. Government now has, I think it's now probably close to 70,000 people are working as what we call volunteers, but they're getting the small amount of money. 